In this webinar, we will be discussing a new reagent from Lycor Biosciences called Chemi IR. The outline of today's webinar includes an introduction to Chemi IR detection, how Chemi IR detection fits into a standard Western blot workflow, how the conversion works, and finally, the benefits of switching to Chemi IR detection. Chemi IR detection is a simple method to convert chemiluminescent Western blots to blots that can be scanned on the Odyssey infrared imager, making them quantitative. Chemi IR detection is accomplished through the Chemi IR detection kit, which consists of Chemi IR diluent and the Chemi IR antibody which is IR dye 800 CW labeled rabbit anti-HRP. The kit enables detection of HRP conjugated antibodies before or after chemiluminescent detection. A typical Western blot begins with a membrane that has proteins transferred to it. The next step is blocking and immunoblotting with your primary and secondary antibodies. For chemiluminescent detection, Substrate is added, and the blot is either exposed to film or imaged with a CCD system. Many times, chemiluminescence detection results in a poor quality image, which is due to over or under exposure of film, creating the need to optimize exposure time for each blot, which results in more time spent in the darkroom. For chemi-IR detection, transfer, blocking, and immunoblotting steps remain the same as a normal chemiluminescent detection. At this point, chemiluminescent detection can be performed. The blot can be rinsed with PBS and then detected by chemi-IR, or you can proceed straight to the chemi-IR detection step. The western blot is converted to chemi-IR by the simple addition of the chemi-IR antibody diluted in chemi-IR diluent. The blot can then be scanned on the Odyssey infrared imager to achieve a digital image and quantitative data. Here is a western blot that was detected by Chemi-IR. In this example, serial dilutions of A431 lysate were run by SDS PAGE and transferred to nitrocellulose. The blocking, primary, and secondary incubations were performed using Lycor casein blocking buffer. The blot was probed with monoclonal anti-P53 followed by donkey anti-mouse HRP. It was then detected with the chemi-IR antibody diluted 1 to 1,000 in chemi-IR diluent. It was then scanned on the Odyssey infrared imager with the 800 channel intensity set at 5. Chemi-IR detection can be used to detect any peroxidase labeled antibody because it is HRP specific. The membrane shown here was spotted with serial dilutions 2,500 picograms to 39 picograms of IgG from various species, along with four peroxidase-labeled antibodies. It was then blocked with Odyssey blocking buffer and detected with the Chemi-IR antibody, diluted 1 to 1,000 in Chemi-IR diluent. The blot demonstrates nicely that the Chemi-IR antibody will not react with your primary antibodies and will only detect peroxidase-labeled secondary antibodies. Chemi-IR detection is possible on a blot that has been exposed to substrate, even for an extended period of time. Peroxidase acts as the catalyst to drive the chemiluminescent reaction, leaving it accessible for anti-HRP binding. The chemi-blot simply needs to be washed two times for two minutes each in PBS to remove any substrate prior to chemi-IR detection. Chemi-IR detection is possible after substrate addition. However, signal intensity may be reduced by as much as 50%, depending on the substrate used. These are replicate blots of serial diluted lysate that were probed and detected with the same antibodies. The blot on the left was exposed to chemi-substrate for approximately an hour prior to chemi-IR detection, and the blot on the right was not. The band selected here is twice as intense on the blot that was not exposed to substrate. 
Can chemiluminescent detection be performed after chemi-IR detection? Once the chemi-IR antibody has bound the HRP conjugate, the HRP is no longer available as a catalyst for the chemiluminescent reaction. The blot shown is the same blot from the previous slide, but detected with supersignal West Dura substrate after chemi-IR detection. You can see that the signal has been greatly reduced and that most of the bands do not show up. Why switch to chemi-IR detection? There are several important reasons. It provides a cost savings over chemiluminescent detection alone. It works with the protocols and reagents that you currently use. It provides a tool for correlation of current detection methods with IR detection, which may be particularly important if you're working with assays that are validated for your current method of detection. It provides digitized images that are immediately archived. And you get all the benefits of the Odyssey infrared imager. Here is a breakdown of the cost of detecting one Western blot by chemiluminescence versus chemi-IR detection alone. You can see that after you add up all the reagents, chemi-IR detection is significantly less expensive. Chemi-IR detection works as well as, if not better, than chemiluminescent detection alone. In each example, membranes were spotted with IgG, detected by chemiluminescence, and exposed to film for one minute, and then detected by chemi-IR. The image on the left in each set is the chemiluminescent detection, and the image on the right is the same blot scanned on the Odyssey infrared imager after chemi-IR detection. In each case, the limit of detection is the same, if not better, with chemi-IR detection. This slide shows blots detected with peroxidase-labeled antibodies from Jackson Immunoresearch. The next few slides demonstrate the same experiment with peroxidase-labeled secondaries from other vendors. Here are dot blots detected with secondary antibodies from Millipore. Again, the image on the left is the chemiluminescent exposure, and the image on the right is the Odyssey scan. These dot blots were detected with peroxidase-labeled goat anti-mouse from Thermo Fisher Scientific. And again, you can see the limit of detection is better on the Odyssey scan. And finally, GE Amersham. Chemi-IR detection is suitable with peroxidase-labeled antibodies from a wide variety of vendors and will work with the HRP secondaries that you currently use for Western blotting. Chemi-IR detection has been evaluated for sensitivity against upper and lower end concentrations of peroxidase-labeled antibodies. In this example, nitrocellulose membranes were spotted with serial dilutions of mouse IgG and then blocked with 5% non-fat milk in PBS tween. The blots were then detected with peroxidase-labeled sheep anti-mouse, which was diluted at the upper and lower end dilutions recommended by the manufacturer. The blots were detected using supersignal West Pico substrate and exposed to film for one minute. They were then rinsed in PBS and detected again with the chemi-IR antibody diluted 1 to 1,000 in chemi-IR diluent. The blots were scanned on the Odyssey infrared imager with the 800 channel intensity set at 6. These images demonstrate nicely that chemi-IR detection works with a range of HRP concentrations allowing the user to keep their peroxidase-labeled antibody concentration the same. Chemi-IR detection works with a variety of substrates also. Blots that have been detected using Supersignal West Dura, Supersignal West Pico, and ECL Plus can be rinsed and detected by Chemi-IR. Other substrates may work but not, have not been evaluated at this time. And again, note that the optimal Chemi-IR detection is achieved if blots are not exposed to chemi-substrate. Chemi-IR detection has been evaluated and works with the following membranes when scanning in the 800 channel of the Odyssey imager. For nitrocellulose, Lycor and GE, and for PVDF, Immobilon FL is preferred. However, Immobilon P, BioRad Immune Blot, 
and pierce low fluorescence all work in the 800 channel detection. Other membranes may be suitable for chemi-IR detection but have not been evaluated at this time. A variety of blocking buffers are suitable for use prior to chemi-IR detection incubation steps. Non-fat powdered milk in PBS tween, Lycor milk blocking buffer, and Lycor casein blocking buffer have been evaluated. If chemiluminescent detection is not necessary, Lycor Odyssey blocking buffer can be used prior to chemi-IR detection step. And please note that the chemi-IR diluent must always be used for the chemi-IR incubation step. Chemi-IR detection provides a bridge to compare current detection methods with IR detection. For some projects, it's difficult or impossible to change detection methods. Once data has been generated using one method, there is often a reluctance to switch because new methods may not be as sensitive or trusted to accomplish what current methods already do. In this example, serial dilutions of C32 lysate were resolved by SDS page and transferred to nitrocellulose. The blocking, primary, and secondary antibody incubations were performed in 5% nonfat milk in PBS tween. The blot was probed with monoclonal mouse antiactin, followed by detection with peroxidase labeled goat anti mouse HRP. The blot was exposed to super signal West Pico substrate, exposed to film for approximately five minutes, and then photographed to achieve this digital image. The blot was then detected by Chemi IR and scanned on the Odyssey infrared imager. This example provides a nice correlation to show what can be achieved with IR detection because high and low abundance proteins can be detected on the same blot, resulting in a wider dynamic range. Here's the pseudo-colored image of the blot detected by Chemi IR from the previous slide. It has been quantitated and graphed. You can see the wide dynamic range is very linear. Some of the benefits that can be achieved with the Odyssey infrared imager are quantitation, wider linear dynamic range than chemiluminescent detection alone, interpolation of unknowns, reports and graphs specifically tailored to your needs, the ability to scan blots at your own convenience, journal quality data and images, and it's environmentally friendly. There's no fixer or developer to dispose of. Chemi-IR detection provides quantitative data, easy conversion from chemiluminescence detection, it can bridge current data with IR data, it's less expensive than chemiluminescence, imaging quantitation and data analysis are all performed on one system, and there's no longer a need for a darkroom. Thank you for attending the webinar today. You may be interested in knowing that the Chemi-IR Detection Kit will be available early this summer. If you're interested in a pre-launch evaluation, please send an email to chemi-ir at lycor.com. If your questions are not answered during the Q&A portion by our, or by our panelists, they can be sent to webinars at lycor.com. Thanks, John. We have several questions coming in here, and our first one is, do I have to keep my blot wet to scan on the Odyssey? No, actually you don't. Um, you can scan your blots wet or dry on the Odyssey imager. It's a nice alternative to chemiluminescent detection because you don't have to wrap your blots in plastic and you can scan them wet. And if you want to scan them dry, you just need to make sure that they're extremely flat with the, the scan bed surface. But you do get nice intensity either way. Thank you. Um, our next question is, is there a membrane preference to reduce background on the Odyssey? We recommend using the Lycor nitrocellulose or GE Osmonics has a good nitrocellulose that works well on the Odyssey imager. For PVDF membranes, we normally only recommend a Mobilon FL because it has low background in both the 700 and 800 channels of the Odyssey. But for this particular application, the other membranes that I mentioned previously, Immobilon P, Biorad Immune Blot, and Pierce Low Fluorescence, 
are suitable for scanning in the 800 channel only. Thanks, Sean. Our next participant asks, why can't I use Odyssey blocking buffer before chemiluminescent detection? That's a good question. Odyssey blocking buffer contains sodium azide, which inhibits the chemiluminescent reaction. And so if you are interested in performing the chemiluminescent reaction, you'll need to use your normal blocking buffers, such as uh, skim milk, um, casein, those types of blocking buffers so that it won't inhibit the chemiluminescent reaction. Um, but again, if you don't want to do the chemiluminescent portion of the detection, you can use Odyssey blocking buffer up to the chemi-IR detection step. Thanks, John. Um, so how long of a time frame do I have to scan my blot once I've detected with chemi-IR? That's another good question. As long as your blot is kept in the dark, it can be stored indefinitely, and you can scan it at your own convenience. If you have a meeting to go to after your chemi-IR detection, you can just put it in your drawer or keep it in PBS in one of our black incubation boxes, and you can scan it at your own convenience. It's not like chemiluminescent detection where you have a certain time frame that is dependent upon an enzyme-driven reaction, which is dynamic and short-lived. With near-infrared scanning, the signal remains stable, which works nicely when you have a busy schedule. That sounds great, Sean. So can I mix the chemi-substrate and chemi-IR reagent? This has been evaluated in our lab, but we're not recommending it at this time. You get the optimal detection when you perform the chemi-IR detection after it's been rinsed in PBS after. If you have performed chemiluminescent detection, it's best to rinse it and then perform the chemi-IR detection. Thanks, John. What detergents can I use with chemi-IR detection? We recommend tween 20 um, added to the chemi-IR diluent at a final concentration of 0.2%. And um, if you're using PVDF membrane, you'll also need to add SDS at a final concentration range of 0.01 to 0.002 percent in addition to the, the tween. Uh, it looks like our next participant is asking, how do I know what intensity setting to use for scanning chemi-IR blots? For chemi-IR detection, you will use the membrane preset, and I would recommend scanning in the 800 channel only and starting with an intensity of 6 and you may need to optimize that according to how your, your image comes out, but I would recommend starting with an intensity of six. All right, Sean. Um, it looks like this is going to have to be our last question for today. Um, I want to remind everyone who's submitting questions that if you haven't received an answer yet, to stick around and our panelists will get to your question as soon as they can. Otherwise, you can expect an answer in your email as soon as possible. Um, so our last question, is what type of optimization is required for chemi-IR detection? That's another really good question. Um, that's another great thing about chemi-IR detection. There is no optimization. Everything is, is done for you in the kit. You simply add the tween 20 to the diluent, and then you dilute the chemi-IR antibody in the diluent and incubate for an hour, and there's no optimization. So that's what's really nice about it. 